Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, award-winning filmmaker and video director, Sean Silva. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, everyone? Rock and rollers. Rich Redman here. This is another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show coming to you from Nippers Corner, America, Braniac, Tennessee. As always, my co host, my co producer, Jim McCarthy. How are you, bud? Doing very well. I want to ask you did you coin that term? Braniac, Tennessee? Yeah. No, everyone in my band makes fun of me because I tell people I live in Brant- Brentwood and they're like, no. You're right in the middle between Antioch and Brentwood in this rare, weird place called Nipper's Corner. Yeah. Yeah. The property value doesn't go up quite as high here, but that's okay because I bought this uh, house 10 years ago and and it's, uh, it's gone up. Yeah, that's what we're worth, looking for. It's probably yeah, worth yeah. a cool million by now. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> that's, that's SoCal. Hey, so this is that podcast where we talk about all things music motivation and success. Mm-hmm. We talk to authors, thought leaders, business leaders, comedians, musicians, anybody that is into creativity and is into changing people's lives, people that have interesting stories. Who are generally positive. Always positive. Yeah. If they're negative Nellies, they're not coming in this room. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> now, who is that laughing? I tell you, I'm super excited about today, and this guy fits every one of those descriptions. Yeah. He is an award-winning TV and film producer, director here in Nashville. If you've seen a music video coming from Nashville, it comes probably from this guy, Mr. Sean Silva. Hey, hey. How are you, bud? How are you? I'm great. It's so good. It's so good. crowd goes wild. Oh, yeah. It's so good to have you here because you you pulled up and I was just like, wow, man, we have done a lot of videos over the years. Yes. We really have. I mean. I mean, you were part of a group of people that. I like the first group of people that I knew when I moved here in 1999, right? Yes. So yeah, yeah. So I, I moved here in 01, but I was, you know, I was flying back and forth from LA to that's right Nashville, and again, it was like I knew a small group of people, and you were in it. So it was like, <laughs> so the, the the story and the web of life, how it all connects, is is that me, Kurt, and Tully, that have been Jason Aldean's rhythm section for 20 years, we played with anybody and everybody in this town and yeah. the the way that we got together was through a friend of you and your brides mm-hmm. Shannon's yep. um, Amy Johns yep. and so Amy John was working on being a recording artist and I had already played music with Kurt Allison for two years and Kurt introduced me to Tully Kennedy the first gig I ever did with those three guys on stage was at a place called Kickers in Clarksville is one of those strip ball honky tonks and was with Amy Johns and Kurt vouched to me there was no time for a rehearsal and he goes look at Amy this guy is going to come in he's going to have everything alphabetized he'll know every, he'll know the songs better than anybody and and we we I showed up we did five sets 45 15 45 on 15 off 40 we did five sets and there was just love affair musically that happened with these guys yeah. and then we went and played with Amy at like Tootsies and showcases, and we were the official Predators house band. Yeah, right. And then, yeah. and so you, at that point, you were already a successful video director, commercial director, on yeah. the on, on, in in the West. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, look. I mean, as far as becoming a successful director, that yeah. really happened for me in in country music. Right. I, you know, I had worked on tons of rock videos and commercials and all kinds of productions in LA right. learning to do what I do yeah. um, as an assistant director and then, you know, working my way up. But really, I mean, where the stars aligned for me was, was in Nashville right. and in, in country music. And, you know, I think, you know, people look at LA or look at California and say, oh, this guy's from California. Right. You know, how did he get into country music? But I grew up in the San Joaquin Valley right. and my brother had a country band. Mm. And the first thing that I shot was when I decided I wanted to really be in focus on directing my own stuff was a, a country video for my brother. Right. And, and he was like a local guy that, you know, traveled through the, the San Joaquin Valley and played Bakersfield and he would open for, you know, bands when they would come into town. And I remember him opening for Rascal Flats and I was already working for Rascal Flats. At, yeah. and, and I remember them backstage coming to me and going, um, so your brother shows up in a tour bus like bigger than 
our tour bus like what's going on i'm right. like oh, he's like the local guy man he's like you know <laughs> is he still playing your brother yeah. no 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 he's not playing anymore but uh but you know it, it i i grew up around it you know yeah. san joaquin valley is farmland is that, is that central coast that's central coast like fresno yeah so fresno that. so right. uh fresno and uh chowchilla chowchilla is what Los i wrote down Palos, here. yeah you know all of these little s- small you know, country towns mm-hmm. and where country was really king. I have a know? lot. I had a lot of great times in Fresno. I got friends there that are. You're you're a car guy. I got a great car guy. Kind of connect you with. Um, but I've spent so much time in in, in California in the last decade. But yeah, I love it so much. Just yeah. you know, if you're into food, fashion, and film, and forward thinking, you're gonna get it. There. Yeah, yeah. And I, I so I did I did my uh, video for my brother, and then I did a car commercial for my dad, which featured you know Ford trucks, right. And I had shot that. The concept was kind of shooting it in black and white, and then it turns to color. And um, I did. Then I started shopping all that stuff around. And Kenny Rogers, yeah, a I gambler, I, I, the, right? So I, I had somebody who knew the people that worked with Kenny Rogers at mm-hmm. Dreamcatcher Entertainment, and they had an office in L.A. And they said, "Well, you know, drop your stuff off over there." I dropped it off over there, and the next thing I know, I literally get a call my house from Kenny Rogers assistant right says um is this Sean Silva I said yeah it's Sean he's um uh, I have uh Mr. Rogers Kenny Rogers would like to talk to you and I was like it's my brother yeah. messing with me you know <laughs> whatever <laughs> so but if it were not for the fact that I had just dropped my reel off there I was like well maybe yeah Right. And, and reels back then were VHS tapes, right? Yes. Right. VHS tape. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I mean, maybe it's just a happen. gambler. Yeah. You know? So he says, uh, Sean, he goes, this is Kenny. And I'm like, oh, hello, sir. He goes, I really <laughs> like your stuff, you know? And I've got this little song and, um, it's about a boy trying to hit a baseball. It's called the greatest. And, uh, like you to, you know, write a treatment for me and maybe we can make a video together. Yeah. So, th- so the gambler was your first gig in Nashville. Pretty the, much. The, the gambler discovered me, which it's is a great story. It, it's pretty cool, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's a cool story. It's a cool story. So, but it, so I'll fast forward. That was a song. It was a little simple story song that radio was not playing mm-hmm. at all. And this, you'll like this. So, uh, all but the music video was flying up the charts at wow. CMT. It was being requested and then it was being played and requested. And then it started being requested at radio. Right. And it it ended up being huge. And after that, we did, you know, three or four videos together. Yeah. So um, that video was a vehicle to launch it up the charts on radio. On radio, yeah, and we did. just had Katie so, Cook here, so I mean, she probably yeah. was the VJ at the at the moment. So, but guess who the program manager was at CMT? Who's that? Chris Parr. Ah, that's oh, wow. right. I head, rem- of, head of programming yeah. at CMT yep. was Chris Parr, and I have a letter from. I still have it. It's in my storage unit somewhere. But anyway. It, there's a letter from Chris Parr just saying, you know, hey, this is a great example of how music videos can really move the needle. And sure. it's a great example for us and our network and what we're doing here. And I wanted you to know that, you know, so, yeah. wow. it, so which is pretty cool. And Chris and I have been friends, you know, managing Jason, of course, now for a, long uh, for a long time, but we've been, we've been friends for a long time, but you know, that meant the world to me. And, and I think, you know, and it really, again, launched me in Nashville, Tennessee and in country music. And so when I started coming here, you know, I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm the guy that's got the number one video on, on CMT. And I touched base with like three or four production companies here. And they're all like, you're Sean Silva. We had no idea. We, yeah. we they saw this pop up in your name and no one knows who you are. So they were connecting the dots and yeah. it was a nice icebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. anyways, that's how, that's, um, you know, how, that's I how got you got started, started here. There was actually, so, so the video, was there a disconnect in the song that just wasn't connecting for the people listening? And then the video kind of, you know, I just think that I, I, well, look, I think that it was at a time when, when Kenny Rogers really wasn't doing, but had not been doing much for, a, a bit yeah right, right. right. 99 and then um 
And then it was just a very simple, I wouldn't say it was a radio friendly song, Mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, When there was a lot of Faith Hill pop stuff happening. Right. uh, Shania Twain. I mean, look, you know, great, you know, nothing against that, but this song was not like that. And I, you know, I think we always, it's just another example of like, do we really know where we should be with, you know, what's being played and, and who's playing what and and you you never can tell like what's gonna break through and right. and that was just something that people really wanted to hear that nobody anticipated i think i think a video can can help i mean you went on to like uh do so many videos with kenny chesney tons with aldean luke bryan blake shelton sugarland brooks and dunn fgl a lot with their flats yeah and so the doors had been cracked open and then you kicked it open and that's kind of like if somebody like i do the same thing if somebody just cracks the door for me and they put their faith in me i'm gonna kick that sucker open <laughs> yeah and maximize that situation so relationships i mean that's a, yeah. an amazing and we're still all doing business with those same people yeah you know chris parr i remember making when he made that transition from being in tv to say oh i want to imagine a manage an artist and it was like yeah. one of those things like wow and you just have to put yourself out there people were like oh really and then look it happened yeah and yeah. then we did this um, that wonderful uh, DVD together, Night Train from Georgia, which was f- very cinematic, very epic. Yeah. Um, one of, I think, Aldine's career crown jewels is that we played to 80,000 people at the University of Georgia yeah. Stadium there, UGA Stadium. And it had a theatrical release. I remember going over to yeah. uh, in Green Hills and yeah. we all went and watched it in the theater. Yeah. And it was cool. And you did a lot of like slow motion, kind of like matrixy, kind of like <laughs> kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think, <laughs> you know, cool. I was a, I, I kind of never really listened to the norm of what you're supposed supposed to do because right. that's the way it's always been done right. you know so for me i always wanted to approach uh concerts and you know we just again uh, you know I've, I've had the opportunity to do you did a skinner, lot of right? i just did skinner yeah and th- which came out in theaters and um you know we we i've always loved to do things like that the mix it up and shoot some off-speed stuff and and mix that in and if you if you do it the right way it feels authentic and organic to the moment. Right. But you know, that takes a great, um, uh, a great group of people that understand your vision. I, I've got a great team of people behind me of editors and, and post guys that, really understand we've worked together on a lot of stuff over the years you know so, i've got editors that have been with me for you know 10 years plus easy right. what, 15 so tackle box is your company so i have tackle box films is my production company but then i also own uh forward which is a post house right. that i started eight years ago um so and and, and that Post House, you know, we we work with lots of different directors and lots of different production companies. It's not just me. Yeah. But, you know, those are really seasoned post people. I mean, that have been doing it a long time and have seen all of the different, you know, stages and transitions of technology. When we started, we were all shooting on film. Right. And now everything's digital and it goes from HD to now 4K, 8K, all, you know, all this stuff. And we just and, shot in 360. And we just shot in 360, which, which was, was a lot of fun. Well, I remember you showed us these cameras for the new Jason yeah. Aldean video, We Back, and we're like, this attaches to your guitar. It looks a little funny. It looks like a giant antenna or something. And then it allows the camera to see around the actor or musician 360 degrees and then you can remove the thing the camera yeah from the shot yeah it's look it's still even you know using it in on that music video yeah. most recently and uh i'm still trying to wrap my mind around it yeah. you know i'm still trying to wrap my mind around what else we can do with it because you know, I think the way we used it was unique. Mm-hmm. Um, and Is taking it the first it, one in Nashville, the first 360 in, in our idiom? Oh, like that, for yeah. sure. Where, I mean, we had eight of them right. attached to different people and cable cams and drones. And, you know, I mean, no, I don't think that anyone's done it on that level. I think people have done 360 performances from their bedroom or from a studio right. or something like that. But to do it live on stage and then take all that media back and and then use the 360 as uh, as, a, as a as a way to explore the space mm-hmm. and editing within it. Yeah. 
I don't, I, I haven't seen that done yet. Wow. So, it, and, and it did things like that we couldn't even have predicted. There right. were moves, there were things that just happened organically that I was like, whoa, hold on Kurt a second. Kurt got a Let lot go of coverage in that one. I was Kurt, like, <laughs> Kurt always gets a lot of coverage, but that was like, hey, Kurt, that was like a Kurt Allison video. Like that was like a PRS I showcase. I mean, the way that, he, you know, he's, he's very active. Very active. He's moving around yeah. and all of a sudden we're going back through the footage and we're seeing this. We're going, whoa, what we, just we, happened? We got to use that. We got to use that. We got to use that. <laughs> how did that. How did that just happen? It looked like you had a, a camera on a go-kart or something, yeah. you know, a remote control car. And it just like, you know, spun yeah. around him within a split second. It was, it, it's like, it's what? so exciting when you see, when you see handheld guys and you see the 360 cameras and you see the camera on the rope and you see a drone, a drone. I'm like, I am like, I love Hollywood. I mean, I love it. I mean, I, I'm like, we're shooting a music video today. It's so fun. <laughs> hey, when he said explore the studio space, it made me think of your Christopher Walken. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, it, no, when he says explore, explore the studio space. <laughs> yes. We need more cowbell. Much more cowbell. <laughs> hey, so we talking about relationships. This is like a perfect time to mention our to show title sponsor, yes. School of Rock. Mm -hmm. So my relationship with Kelly and Angie McCray goes back, oh my God, eight, nine years. They have one of the best School of Rocks in the world. There's 250 locations, School of Rock locations on the planet. There's 80,000 students in the program. And what kids can look forward to is learning a great skill set that they can have for the rest of their life. They can learn to sing, play keyboards, play bass, play guitar, play drums. They could take lessons. They can start when they're, I believe, six years old, go all the way to 18 years old. And there's an adult program too. Yeah. And music education rocks. I'm a user. We would never do music videos together. I would never be able to play that set of drums over there or tour the world like we did if I didn't take lessons and 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 soak up that culture that that music education can provide. Mm -hmm. And even if kids don't go on to be professional musicians, they're going to leave with great things like teams team building skills and how to get along with other people and setting goals and time management. And they're going to come out with improved self-esteem. So if you parents out there are looking for something fun and positive for your kids to do, reach out to my friends at School of Rock. And I got two email addresses for you, Nashville at schoolofrock.com or Franklin at schoolofrock.com. Two locations. They're the best. Look them up, schoolofrock.com. You know what I wouldn't mind finding out what? is your process. You, 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 what I've been thinking about as you guys have been talking was the Kenny Rogers video. Mm -hmm. He comes to you. Mm -hmm. um, you have this big opportunity. What's your your process in your mind? What do you want to find out first? You know, is it hearing the song, visualizing it, mm -hmm. coming up with a storyline? How do you work? Well, so there's a couple different ways that it happens. <clears throat> is um, uh, typically, uh, either the record label or the artist directly will come to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, I've been doing this for a long time since the, the '90s, and um, so the relationships. Uh, some of the artists will just come to me directly, and you know, like Jason, and, yeah, uh, Kenny, of course. Um, Jason's and, manager had the idea for the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for the 360, uh, Clarence Spaulding actually called me. He's like, hey, uh, I want to do three videos for this for this song. Uh, you, you make, make it, it easy. easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, oh, great. Of course, you know, I'm like, I go, I know what this means. They want three videos for the price of one. I was about to say. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Literally. I, I mean, that's what I, I thought. I, I thought because, you know, now it, it really is more, 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 more. I mean, everybody wants more content, more content, more coverage, more behind the scenes, more this, more that. You know, what else can I get from this one day of shooting? Content two is days king. Of shooting, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You know, I just want more. I don't want to pay for more. Right. <laughs> Right. But you're at a point where you can kind of command a rate. Uh, not really, man. No. I mean, it's I mean, there's, like, there's look, an industry it, standard. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's like, look, when the when an artist comes to you, that's one thing because their expectation is is this, right? And and that's why they come to me, and we go, okay, it's this is what it's going to be, man. This is what it's going to be, you know. And and that's what it usually is, and, and uh, in the in the car business, they call that champagne dreams on a beer budget. Yeah. So, but when a, when, when, a, when it, a label comes to you, they'll say, this is what we've got. So 
again, so two different Take it or processes, it. Yeah. right? Uh-huh. So, you know, again, you know, so Clarence comes to me and goes, I want three videos for this. Oh, okay. So then I write, uh, so I decided to go with a three part series. That's smart. Right. So it's the same story. We're just telling it over a longer period of time. I said, mm. but it's going to take like three days. And by the way, I want to do a crash scene and this car to flip and do all these things that most people don't have the money or the resources and music videos these days to do. And usually music videos are one day. One day. But at least you had the same setup and the same story arc and you could go boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we. I mean, look, we covered a lot of different things, but the good thing was that the performances, we could knock all of those out in one location, but then the story, you know, covered a few different mm-hmm. locations. But so anyway, but I, so that I go, I went back to him and gave him the budget, you know, and he's like, no, that makes sense, man. It's, it's three videos. It's not one. That's nice. And I was like, oh, thank Whew. you, Clarence, for understanding and right. Chris as well. You know, I mean, they, those guys have been doing this for a long time, so they get it. But, um, but, but yeah, but that's, but that, but, but that, so that's one angle. Mm-hmm. But the other one is, is it, okay, you, when it comes from the record label and they go, you have this much to work with, mm-hmm. then you have to write within that space. Right. And, and that's where you see a lot of, of like, you know, some of the younger guys coming in who are super talented, nothing, not taking anything away from the, the newer, younger directors that are coming in. Cause I love them and I yeah. want to support them. I mean, how many are there in town now that are getting traction? Uh, I mean, there's, there's a few guys, honestly, um, I don't pay a ton of attention, Yeah, but, uh, there's a, there's a, I know there's a few guys that I've seen the work and I'm like, man, that's really good. Yeah. That's really well done. Great story. You know, I always try and focus on the story versus the visual because I think it, it's a little easier these days to get a beautiful visual just because of the technologies that are out there and everything. You know, it's different than, than when we have to rent a helicopter yeah. and drives the budget and, up. and shooting on film and not really knowing what you have until you get in there. I mean, that was, that's the biggest thing yeah. is that now you're shooting on video and you're actually seeing the image that you're capturing back then on film, you weren't actually seeing was what guesswork. you were getting on film. You were, you were watching a video monitor, but that was literally just a scope yeah. in a way that was just looking through the lens right. at the same time that it was being burnt into the film. Right. You, you don't know if it's there or not. Yeah. Until, like back in the day with our flash bulbs, yeah. like in dropping your things <laughs> yeah. off the one hour photo, like, I hope I didn't blink. <laughs> right. But, but see the, but back then that, that also dictated kind of the, uh, you, you know, the budgets and the money because, you know, the record labels weren't going to just throw money away. Right. They wanted to work with somebody they knew they were, could trust was going to have it. It was going to be on film. It was going to be beautiful. It was going to be a well-crafted story. And you only had so much film to work with as well. Right. So remember, you couldn't just shoot all day, all night, right. constant, just press record and but I like get the, it all. I feel like you still work like that. Like you have an, I a, do. a limited, uh, you pre-plan everything. I don't know if you storyboard everything and you're super meticulous because I've worked with a lot of directors where it's like 18 hours, the sun's coming up, uh, band places yeah. in the last hour before the sun comes up and you're like, what, what is this? You're like, okay, we're getting this shot, this shot. We're going to do rich. We're going to cover him, cover Kurt, boom, close ups, yeah. wide shots, done. You're home. Yeah. Done. You got yeah. what you need. Yeah, That's yeah. I, amazing. I, I always know what, what I want to achieve and how I'm going to go about getting it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to plan. Otherwise I can't sleep <laughs> you know, yeah. the night before. Yeah. So I have to have it laid out, you know, and that's my process, you know, writing the treatment, getting the treatment approved. Everybody's on the same page. And then I go through my shot list. And I mean, when I put a shot list together, I'm also putting it in shooting order Mm -hmm. so that I know exactly how to go about that day. So, you know, my, my ADs love me. You know, because they're I show up, hand them the shot list, and they're like, I mean, some of the ads in this town have taken actually taken my format, literally wow. taken my format, and projects. they use it, yeah, for other other projects over the years, yeah. So, but it's you know, I mean, that's my process. It's just how I have to do things, yeah. you know. So hyper organized, but methodical, and it just ends up being a greater product. And I think it, the the culture on set ends up being better because people are like 
you know, have to be on their toes because they're not like, I'm just going to go to my trailer and be there for five hours and wait. Like, we know we got to be on with Sean. There's you know? leadership there. Yeah, yeah, tons of leadership. And and, yeah. and I've seen you work with your guys and it just seems like they're all ha super happy. To be. You're employing a lot of people, which is cool. Yeah, which I love. Yeah. I, I love bringing a team of people together and it feeling really like, you know, we're, we're working on something together as a unit, Perfect. you know, it, it, it will always be that way for me. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I know it's, there's a lot of this kind of, you know, one guy or girl wearing a lot of hats and I feel mm -hmm. bad because I, I feel like they're not getting, uh, they're not, they're missing out on something right. that we all kind of grew up with, which was that, you know, team, team player, team work together. And, uh, it's I like think, being in a I, I, I think, look, the, the further you get, the more success you have, the more you're going to have to understand collaboration Oof. and working with other people yeah. and answering to a client mm -hmm. and answering to whoever is paying the bills, man. Totally. It, it, you know, and I think that's where a lot of people are kind of struggling where they go from doing it all themselves and then all of a sudden they literally just cannot even delegate, can delegate or scale. communicate themselves. Not all. I'm just saying, you know, like, again, I mean, I think there are some great young directors out there that are really doing amazing work in music videos, but you know, I'm not doing a ton of music videos mm -hmm. anymore either. Right. I'm working for my main guys that trust me and have been with for a long time and, right. and also some interesting projects, uh, people that I just really like. Um, and you know, and, and whatever those budgets are, I'll do them because right. I just want to, want to do them. I you really, want you want to do the work. I'd I rather love, do the work than not do the work. Yeah. Because you're maintaining a relationship. Nothing bad comes from it because you're working your craft. Yeah. You're help changing someone's life. They've requested you to do yeah. it. I, I tell all the people during my, you know, my my corporate motivational speeches, I just talk about the three C's connecting, communicating, and collaborating. So we all as human beings want to connect. And then what really separates the men from the boys is is that follow up. A lot of people don't follow up. We want we want to communicate with each other and hopefully get to the point where we can collaborate and create something special yeah. and epic together. Um, and then when people say, oh, how much is your keynote speech? And you say, it's this much money, but that's you know a starting point. I would rather do the job than yeah. not do the job and then create a relationship that you can cultivate over the years. Yeah. I am loving this conversation, guys, but we're going to take a quick break, pay some bills. Be right back. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Learn by doing, I definitely think, resonates with what we're about here at the School of Rock. I'm Angie McCright, and I'm the owner of the School of Rock in Franklin and Nashville. I would say that the majority of kids that come in have either been sitting in their bedrooms watching YouTube, learning how to play, or they've taken music lessons at some point in their life. We do have a lot of beginners. It doesn't matter what level you're at. You can participate in our programs, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. We don't teach music to put on shows. We put on shows to teach music. Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Recently, you've expanded to you're doing a commercial TV and you're doing doing documentary film stuff for ESPN. And then yeah. you have an unscripted division now in your company for reality TV. This is awesome. Yeah, it's you know, the TV thing and networks is a it, it, it's a it's a process. Mm -hmm. It's not quick. It's not like, oh, write the treatment. Okay, we're we're shooting next week. You know, this is like we, you know, we've got two projects that we just did. One for HGTV called Theme Queen that aired on Halloween, and it'll re-air again. Two episodes that'll re-air on, um, I guess it's Thanksgiving. It sounds like it's going. Oh, that's good. Going to play again, but um, you know that. I mean, we worked on that for a year. Just those two episodes. You know, I mean, literally, but there's a lot of chefs in the kitchen and TV. I, it, yeah. Lot. You know, and that's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's a process, but, uh, and then we've got another project that we're developing right now. Another series we're developing with, with oxygen and that's taken and it's like a murder show. So that whole thing and the research that goes into those shows 
and the process that goes into those shows and because these are real murders that have taken place right so you have to connect with local government there and go through and, and get access to the, the case files all that, yeah. case files and everything and and go through all of that stuff and man it it's it's a lot of work and it's it takes a long time yeah. so you you hope that they're is is something great waiting at the end of that you know in, in terms of a series yeah you know but um you know we do a lot of development that you know unfortunately sometimes doesn't always um doesn't always mean a successful series so um you know i got a couple guys that they just handle that department while i'm doing the documentary stuff and the music stuff and the concert film stuff and i'm hoping i feel like concerts are are coming back like these be great. theater concerts. I feel like that that's coming back. There's more outlets for concerts again. I think, you know, hopefully Netflix and some of these streaming companies are going to start picking right picking live shows up. Yeah, people again. have always been, you guys need to do a live record. I was like, I don't know if that's, that's been a success since Frampton comes alive. I mean, it just seems like people don't have the patience for it or, but we, that would be so fun. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's, it's happening. I feel like that trend's coming back, you That'd know? That'd be great. And, um, so, you know, the festivals and, and the stadium shows and so many people doing these things now, um, I just feel like there's more opportunities for those to really be captured with, you know, 14, 15, 16 cameras like we do it. Yeah. And and have have something at the end of the day for that, that people would want to see again, or maybe they didn't get the chance to see it and they want to experience it. So, um, yeah. I don't envy the editor who's got to put together 15 camera shots. He's got to be good. He's got to be fast. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. And, and an eye. We, well, for, we, for Skinner, we had two editors working simultaneously. Right. So they split the um, split the songs up. Because you had a deadline. Yeah. This hits theaters at this date, which yeah. means it needs to be delivered at this date, which needs yeah. to be, you yeah. know. And the Skinner songs, man. It's like I went in there because I color correct all my own stuff. So, you know, we, <laughs> I, I'm like, oh my God, this. These songs, Freebird. these songs are really long. You know, like Freebird's long. Freebird was 18 minutes. That oh, performance, my God. the whole thing, I think it was like either 16 or 18 minutes from start to finish. Amazing and epic. And honestly, the drum, I don't, have you seen? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's Michael Cardellone. Yeah. The drum moment in that song yeah. da, is da. literally <laughs> like one of my favorite coverages of any live performance I've ever had in my life. My steady cam guy just had this epic, epic shot of him that just kept getting closer and closer and closer and closer. Well, closer. now I got to talk energy this. Was going to go, <laughs> it was, Come on, I was, like, I was like, oh my God, it's just like one of these chill bump moments, yeah. man. And when we watched it in theaters the other night over there, I was like, I've jumped up out of my my chair, Dang. man. And I'm Woo! like, oh, I wish we could have awesome. seen it. It was amazing. I love the drum coverage moment. Other guys yeah. in my band are like, oh, it's Redmond's time. You know, um, yeah. I would kill to have the cutting yeah. room floor footage you've had over the years because yeah. you always get in there with a, with a steady, with yeah, a yeah. With handheld to get the energy. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of music videos with our friend Wes Edwards too. Yeah, he Wes always is great. loves the drums. You know, he's yeah, like yeah. he would put flip cameras on my cymbals. He would mount yeah. them, and then he would just find things pedal yep. pedal yeah. cameras. And, Interesting shots. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Wes, who I, I love Wes's work, and you know, he's a guy that he, I mean, he's a really great editor too. So when you think like an editor, you know what you want to see next. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So right. he has that really great, you know, that gift and ability. So, you know, he's a super talented kid that's been around for a I long know. time. We did the very first video together, Hicktown. It was a five hour yeah. shoot in the mud mm -hmm. of Florida. Mm -hmm. Mud and fire and models and trucks. And Why didn't they do that in <laughs> Tennessee though? Um, I, I think we were on tour at the time because in 2005, oh, okay. we were doing over 200 shows a year and they're like, if we're going to shoot a music video, we got to go to these guys. We got to go to them. Right. Yeah. So we we just we I think we had like a day off in between dates, and we're like the location scout said there there we got a mud pit. We're doing it. Yeah. Right. You know, and it was fun. I played the song fifty times. Like yeah. I played Hicktown fifty times, and everybody else was just miming, you know, mm -hmm. faking. But the drummer's got to hit. Yeah. The symbols have got to move. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And that and, and look, I mean, that was a, I mean, that was a hell of a coming out party for jason i mean that video just killed it yeah. i mean it rocked you know and it and you know i think that for me i think that 
with with Kenny um, previous to that, it was young. You know, mm-hmm. we did, we, that was the first video we ever did together. And I feel like that video, when it came out, it was explosive like that. And I think every artist kind of has that moment, but, you know, and not to say that the music video is what really launches every artist. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and yeah pretend to say that, you know, just because I do it, you know, but, but I do think that that's, a, it plays again, a role. It, it, it's like a major premiere. It, it, it's always been like this thing where you finally get to see him. And I think with Kenny on Young, it was the first time that people saw him in this kind of, he, you know, he had been working out and yep. he just looked different. And he, you know, and we put, you know, it was funny. I said, I go, I told him, I said, hey, I want you and the band to wear uh, these concert t-shirts. And he's like, really? I mean, his own merch, or no? no. There was th- this was before this was before the 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 trunk brand that reinvented the the concert. These were legit concert shirts that I had. Oh, like, and I'm like, I, I think I want you guys to to because the song was nostalgic. It was young, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, what if we put you guys in like these vintage like like concert shirts and stuff and. I had this Willie Nelson 4th of July concert, you know, when, when Willie played the 4th of July concert special thing. And, um, and I brought it to him. I go, I mean, I think you should wear this. Yeah. And he's like, okay. Was it sleeveless? He goes, <laughs> Was it the he sleeveless? Goes, yeah. So he, goes, I got off the sleeves? so he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, um, whose is that? I go, that's mine. And he goes, well, I'm going to cut the sleeves off. Was that the birth of his new look, the the, the guns? The it gun was. Show? Yeah. It was. I go, okay. So he did. So he, yeah. he, he cut the, the sleeves off. And man, I'm telling you, that it became iconic. Like you had that, a vision. And, and, and I'm telling you, like I had, I had artists and managers both calling me saying, we want young. Like, I, I want, we want you to do our next video. We want young. And I was like, well, I already did young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do young again, you know? And, and they, and then what I quickly found out, you know, being young to the industry and a little naive, what I quickly found out was that they just picked up the phone and called another director and said, Hey, we want young. (laughs) So you just said, yeah, I'll give you something like it. (laughs) Cause I said, I said, well, you know, young is you like young because it's unique and interesting for right now. I mean, this is, let's do something different, you know? And they're like, no, we want young. So they, again, they just picked up the phone, called another director and said, Hey, we want to do a video, but we want to do young. And then whoever that was, was like, okay, cool. Let's go do that. You know? And then also we see these videos popping up, you know, I'm going, man, that looks a lot like our video. I remember Kenny calling me going, uh, it seems, seems like the people, people are copying us, people man. Are copying us, man. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a, um, that's a good thing when people are copying you, you know, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And look, we, everybody knew that we knew we were onto something. Kenny sure. knew he was onto something and, um, and, and, but to his, uh, you know, to his credit, he didn't stay there. He, the, you know, he started doing other stuff and was, you know, with him, you, you asked about process, Mm -hmm. you know, with him, it was, it is literally like more often than not a collaboration where we will sit down together, listen to a song together. And he'll say, you know, I was thinking about this and that. And I go, man, it's hitting me like this and that. And Mm -hmm. and then before we know it, we've got it. We know what we want to do. So such a, such a nice guy. You're talking about, you know, an essential, and and I always kind of hear the, the, you, you guys talked a lot about, uh, you know, what makes a Sean Silva different than the other guys out there? Because I know as a videographer myself, there are people out there doing music videos for 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, real, that, that can't be good. It's not good. But I mean, <laughs> you actually refusing to kind of, well, this we've already done it this way because we wrote a video, we made a video according to serve the song, right? Which is kind of 100% your thing. Yeah. So another director coming forward and saying, yeah, we'll do that. You know, it's kind of like they just, they're desperate to get the work. Yeah, you've established yourself as kind of like I'm gonna I'm gonna do right by you. Mm-hmm. My value proposition to you and the way I, the reason why I command the price I have is because I do these things. Is because I bring this artistic vision and collaboration and understanding of your song 
And that's what the video represents. But I think you're you know? at a point where, yeah, you can put a, 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 a price on your time and talent. Yeah. We've had ton, tons of guests. I mean, you have to be within the limits of the expectations for the genre and the city yeah. that we're in and yeah. with the going rate. But at the same time, you, it's, I think it's a, we have had a lot of guests on there. Like, how do you put a value on your time and your talent and do it unapologetically? Yeah. You know, I mean, I've been playing when we just say, you know, if somebody hires me to play on a song for them in this studio, very here, right here, someone can send me a song from Japan. Yeah. I could talk to them on Skype, play a song for them, send it to it. They're not paying me for the one song or the one hour. They're paying me for the 43 years of playing the drums yeah. Yeah. and the pain yeah, or the heartache and all that. And your journey was very interesting. Um, we have other mutual friends on the West Coast, Christian Lyon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, did, Which I didn't realize that was a, you know, they, like, I, that, that you knew him. Because we're, we're, we're like drummer actor buddies. And so like he was a drummer in David Carradine's band. And I think oh, you guys funny. were like like pals on the West Coast when you were both studying acting, right? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so uh, when I moved to LA in 1990 from Central California, Fresno area, um, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do, man. I was like, I had worked for an architect out of school. I'd worked for an architect for like, you know, a year. And I was like, man, do I really want to be stuck here in this office drawing the rest of my life? I mean, I love drawing and I love being creative. Cubicle. But man, I was just like, I don't know. So I had a buddy that wanted to go to LA mm -hmm. and he wanted to be an actor. And, you know, I coming from Fresno, I didn't, you know, it wasn't like I had these great expectations of and dreams. You know, I, hell, I didn't even know you could dream as big as you can. You can. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm I'm big guy. I, I, you know, I'm big on hey, dream big. Right. You know, now because I know that you can, but you know, I was like, I'm just let's go, man. I'll go with you for the yeah. summer. Check it out. You started, and, and that's and, what everybody does. They moved to LA, start taking acting. Yeah. Lessons. So we started so taking you like it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he wanted to be an actor. I'm like, I'll take some acting you know, lessons and stuff. And, and I loved it. And, you know, I got some commercial work, you know, and, you know, got some extra roles in some shows and Fun. well, you had the, uh, the Johnny Depp thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, were you, were you, was that your type? Yeah, were you compared to that? Yes. Yes. I, I, yeah, I, I was all often called in for, you know, poster doubling him or whatever, you know, awesome the, things like that. But, you know, uh, but anyway, I, you know, I, in one of my acting classes, I, I met Christian, Christian yeah. and, oh God, man, he, he, that guy was just such a fun personality and such a great character and, you know, salt of the earth, just sweet guy, you know? Uh, but yeah, we studied, we studied uh, together for a, a few years and, and we're buddies, we're friends. I mean, I think, you know, I knew that he was a drummer then. I had another uh, roommate that played the guitar and, you know, I could sing a little bit. And I was like, at one point we're like, we should do a band, man. We should have a band, you know? And uh, that lasted like two seconds. Oh yeah, it, you guys didn't ever play the Viper Room? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, but, you know, I don't, you know, I don't, I just don't, I don't know. It was, it was fun. You know, yeah. LA was fun for a while and then, you know, and then you kind of go, okay, but what am I here for? Yeah. What am I really doing? Now, was it your relationship that really kind of like helped you come to Nashville? Was that was like, I'm going to, I'm going to leave Southern California. Were, were you dating Shannon and you were like, I'm going to move here now? Or No. So I would, well, I was going through a, 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 at the time when I moved here, I was going through a bad breakup. They were all bad. Bad yeah. relationship. Yeah. So I was ready to get out of LA at that point. I had been there 11 years and I'm like, man, I feel like I did my time here. And and to be honest, it was like, I, I you know, LA, I love LA. I lived like three blocks from the beach for a lot of years and Venice? never went to the beach because I was working, yeah. you know, and I was just, I was just trying to find my way. Once I decided that, hey, I'm the directing is what I'm going to do. Then I was all in at that point and just figured it out how to get there. But, um, the, uh, but yeah, I was ready to leave LA cause I never really wanted to raise a family there. Family was always going to be important to me. I always wanted a family. Nice. And, uh, you have two you children, know, so right? yeah. So when I moved here, Shannon was also part of that group group of people that yeah. I knew. Yeah. And, and we were just friends for the longest time, uh, until, you know, I had my breakup. She had her breakup 
uh, she dated Keith Gaddis for okay. a long time. Yeah. And Keith, who I think is just a brilliant guy. I mean, amazing songwriter, great artist. So, you know, tons of respect for him and no issues. I love him because yeah. they broke up. Is you he know, because in Los Angeles? <laughs> <laughs> I always I always say Keith is my best right. friend. Right. Because they they, they broke, broke up. up. Yeah. yeah. So uh but uh yeah, so then Shannon and I started dating and Shannon had a record deal at the time and then you know, she went through like three different record deals. And then, uh, her last deal was on Warner brothers. And we, that's when she got pregnant and we were married at that point, but, um, she got pregnant. And then, uh, I think what was that five years. We've been married 16 years. Wow. That's great. Yeah. And we have a, a 12 year old about, right. about to, to turn uh 13. So I hear you. Now they, they have interest yeah. in music or the arts or, or filmmaking. So, or? yeah. So, yeah. uh, they both Tanner has, my oldest son has taken uh piano for a long time and he's really great. And I mean, if, if I come home at the end of the day and he's sitting at the piano and playing, man, Chopin. I just sit down and yeah. I'm just like, huh. this is amazing. I love listening to him play music. It's like one of my favorite things. Right. But in the last, he, uh, he broke his foot this last year and he, so he started playing his guitar oh, nice. in his bedroom and stuff. And Tristan also showed interest in playing guitar and we've never pushed music on our kids at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, they've got it. If they're going to want it or they want it, they got to find it themselves, man. Mm -hmm. I, that's just not going to be what, that's a good plan. what we do, but I I'm, I'm thrilled that they've found their way to it right. and that they love it. And, uh, they're actually, um, they, they, <laughs> strangely enough, uh, their guitar teacher is Clayton from Kenny's band. Kenny's band. Yeah. Keep it in the family, teaching, man. man. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, well, I don't know. I've never taught music before. Wow. And he's like, but I'd really like to try it. That's you great. Know? And he knew our kids already because they've come out on the road and everything. So he's like, yeah, I'd like to do that. And I'm not sure that he will ever know what that means to me that he's teaching my kids music. Like it's, I, I don't know. I mean, what a gift it that is he's giving yeah. my boys and our family to spend the time with them. And he actually loves it. He, he loves it. He's loving doing it. So, you know, I think it's been great for, for all of them. And, uh, but, and I'm excited to see when they go into rehearsals, you know, this next year, you know, and have the boys come over there and watch Clayton. Cause they love Clayton. They yeah. love Kenny. They love all everybody, you know, watching them on, on stage and, and you guys, I mean, it's like for them, it's just, um, it, even though it's been part of their lives, forever or you know uh, their young lives um they don't take it for granted they they really appreciate music they really appreciate the people that that do it mm -hmm. and um you know whether it's going to be their profession or not i don't know that's up to them yeah you know that's you seem like you'd be a great dad you know i just I, I've I've got my that best man. yeah we but all Jim, can hope jim's a yeah. it, it's kind of reminding me of like you know taking it for granted with uh spencer that time oh yeah spencer his son plays drums and he just knows me as uncle rich who just is always around with the drums yeah and i'm like you want to learn this like you know he's like nah. no, I'm, I'm on my phone <laughs> and, and it's and it's so frustrating because he's got such a talent for it and i kind of do push it on he's got to find made it him, himself though. i'm i know and yeah. i made him go into music uh you know band in high school or not in middle school and stuff yeah just to i'm like he's like well i don't, I don't want to do this i said i understand that but you're 11 you don't know what you want yeah if in two years that you still don't want to do this yeah we'll revisit this but yeah. you know i'd rather you have the foundation and know in two years that you don't want to do this than have you do nothing yeah you know so i yeah. mean that's that's the kind of perspective i have on that yeah. parenting is tough man. dude i it see I, I i thought about starting a podcast yeah. but i wanted to call it parental guidance <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> because there is no there, there's no manual for raising kids i think it's, it, a great it's great idea. probably the most important thing the <clears throat> greatest responsibility that anyone will ever have they're in charge of a human i don't know how you're you guys do it I, life. Would, I think i would crater under the responsibility it would crush it's, me oh God, it's man, it's Probably. a learning experience. <laughs> it is a learning and growing experience yeah. every day. And and you know, and there's so many funny stories, man. You have two sons. It's like, oh God, yeah, two sons. TNT. Yeah. I've got I've got a 13 year old daughter. Oh. Who's got 
the boyfriend now. Oh my God, you're just going to watch oh her God. blossom with a shotgun in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> It is, it's. I mean, I would be so my wife, much an overbearing, overprotective father. You, but the <sighs> thing is that you say that, and you got to measure the fact that if I am like this, I'm just going to drive her to the point where she's going to hide it from us. They'll mm -hmm. find a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the kind of things that my wife and I are like, okay, we really got to be over communicative with her and acknowledge that we know what's going on. We remember <laughs> being 13. Okay? Yeah. That's the thing that's, we, 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 we get it. Okay. Yeah. We understand what's going through Cole's head. Mm -hmm. All right. Our boyfriend. And the technology. All right. Yeah, they could do all sorts oh of things. And I'm telling you, the 12, 13, that pocket right there where mm -hmm. the trans, where things start to change. Yeah. Oh. I mean, we are, we are in it. I just, so are did in you it. have the, did you have the sit down birds oh, and yeah. the bees or did you buy him a book or no, my parents no, no, just no, bought no. me a book and they're like, good luck. No, we, we, we're, we're <laughs> no. pretty cut and dry. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they they know. Well, they're exposed to so many things yeah. on, the, on the internet now. It's like, yeah. You know, Tanner, they cost money. Yeah. yeah, Tanner and I said, we we had the talk last year. The and talk. Then he, it, the talk last year, and his, his brother's three years younger than him, and he comes to me like a week later. He looks at me, and he goes, he goes, Dad, he goes, you know the talk and I, that we had? And I said, yeah, I know the talk we had. He goes, you might want to have that a little earlier with Tristan. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. You know what my son does? Wow. You're going to appreciate this, Rich. My son in the middle of nowhere, or a bit like in the middle of really um, interesting situations. Just blurred out stuff. Oh, my gosh. And it's like we're, we're, we're at dinner with friends. So let's go, Dad, what's masturbation? And we're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> What are we? Yeah. And he and like, dude, you are you doing this on purpose? Are you trying to get a rise out of us? And he's like, no, I really want to know. <laughs> just right can, now. Can we just talk about this later? Yeah, at a four star dinner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just dude, in front. I think he did it in front of you one time. I mean, Dad, what's a boner? I. Yeah. <laughs> I um, what? See, I teach a lot of kids, but then I can give them back to their parents. Like I have taught. Yeah. I've been teaching since I was like, like you know, when I was one step ahead of my drum teacher. I think you know, you have something to say, you could teach. So I've been teaching since I was like, I don't know, maybe 16 years old. No, yes. and so, but then I can give them back to their parents. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, thank you so much, Rich. My, you know, he's great and da, da, da. And a lot of them don't go on to do it, but they learn so much in the process, you know? Yeah. And it, it, it helps you. I think, you know, giving back and paying it forward. I, I, I love it. Well, I mean, you're looking at raising, you know, if Rich had to raise, if you had to raise a kid, mm -hmm. I always tell people there's two ways to look at something that seems monumentally challenging. Um, looking at the top of the mountain, and realizing that, well, how am I going to get up there? Well, dude, you got, you got to get to the, the first incline and just take your first step. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have kids, it's from day one, it's okay. I, I need to learn how to change a diaper. That's how you do Can it. Can you believe I've never done that? I've change never had to do it. I've never had to do it. I yeah. set up a lot of drums and, you know, ruined, gave myself a groinal hernia and I'm full of mesh right now. But, uh, but I mean, that's for a lot of people who look at <laughs> monumental challenges, you know, how do I get to the, you know, career aspirations of a Sean Silver or a Rich Redmond? My gosh, the summit of that mountain is so high. One day at a time. One day at a time. Same thing. That's it. It's the same. Yeah. yeah. One day at a time. Like, Learn something granny, new. My granny used to say that all the time. Yeah. One day at a time. I think it was a, a, it was a song. great was a, sitcom too. It was. Yes, it was. It Schneider. was a great sitcom. Is there a, some new projects or something you want to talk about? Something you want to promote? Tackleboxfilms.com? Yes. What's, yep. the, what's the story behind that? Because I noticed the uh, license plate. On your truck. Yeah, what was it? Box Films. Uh, it's the story is that I named it after my grandpa. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it was just my my grandpa and I, just the times that we spent fishing mm -hmm. together, you know. So for me, it was just like, okay, well, anytime anybody asks me about like the name, then I get to remember grandpa That's awesome. and those times yeah. together. So you're an old softy, man. I am. You're an old soul. I am. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I am. He a, and I have a lot in common. I am a softy. He, he's a videographer. You're big on family. Uh, your grandfather was a fisherman. Yeah. My father was a fisherman. Take us fishing all the time. Yeah. You still fish? Not as much as I'd like. Yeah. I'd like to get back to it. Where do you go fishing yeah. in Tennessee? Where do you, where do you, where? Rivers. There's, lots of, okay, there's yeah. lots of fishing around here. Says Rich the Outdoorsman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a neon and Harkening cement back guy. back to our, our conversation with um, uh, Tyler Farr. Oh, Tyler yeah, we just had Tyler Farr. <laughs> he is a funny we character. Think he does a uh, he does the uh, duck. He is now a duck buck commander. commander. Yeah. Buck commander. Buck commander. 
And we thought with, a very interesting episode. With Luke and, and yeah, with Jason, Jason. He's going to be doing that. Oh, okay, a very cool. interesting episode would be to take Rich and I hunting because we've never, I've never been hunting and you surely haven't been hunting. No, my dad used to do, he was an archer. Like he, yeah, yeah. With the bow, not a compound bow, but just the standard, you know, your like reactions in that scenario would be hilarious. It would I'm be like, gold. You're going to, you're going to kill that thing. Uh -huh. What did it do to you? Yeah. <laughs> Rich, point the gun down. Oh oh Rich, God. point the gun down. Not at your foot. <laughs> my kid, so my, so I, I grew up doing a lot of bird hunting. Yeah. So duck, dove, pheasant uh, in San Joaquin Valley. Um, and then I, I went bow hunting and got my first deer, I would say six years ago, five, six years ago. Um, and I, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy hunting, uh, big game is never, I, I prefer the bird hunting, you know, over big game, but, um, yeah, I don't, I haven't done much though. I've actually done more hunting in California growing up than I did here, which seems odd. Yeah. My brother, Jason, my younger brother, he's a, he drives the big rigs for FedEx and he right. lived in Montana and now he's in outside of Cheyenne, Wyoming and he's there strictly so he can feed his, uh, his uh, bird hunting and fishing addiction. I mean, he's a total outdoorsman. Yeah. So he hunts dove and pheasant. He's a guide. He shows, you know, corporate people, the state. Rich, have you ever gone fishing at all? For yeah, when I was young, I think I used to do, uh, you know, saltwater fishing and like for flounder and stuff. Right. You know. Any deep sea fishing? Um, me and the guys in Aldine's pan went, we did go one time, but it was poor timing because we parted really hard the previous night and then we went out to, to the the yeah. ocean rocking and we were Respect all in Dramamine. Over the, over the edge. Tully was over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> bad idea. Such a bad idea. We yeah. used to we used to we did a lot of deep sea fishing when I was a kid. You know, so that's yeah. those, a lot of my memories are from bluefish, tuna, and yeah. stuff. Yeah, see, big I, game. Type I, I, of fish. I can't do the deep sea fishing. I'd really? like to do more uh, shallows, the flat water bone fishing, things like that, where it's right. like fly fishing. Um, but man, I can't do. I, I get sick. I get yeah. sick out there, you know. Yeah. And um, so never. Yeah, I, I, I spend a lot of time, you know, with Kenny on his boat, and yeah. But that's not fishing. That's like drinking. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's I think point. that hunting <laughs> is kind of like guy bonding too, right? You know, you're out there in the cold. There's a flask of whiskey, and you're waiting for the buck to come by. It's bonding, right? Yeah. Unless you're supposed sort to be of. quiet. Yeah, you're supposed to be pretty quiet. Yeah, that would be bad yeah. for me. Hey, lady! <laughs> that would be, uh, you know. But you know what? That, we, we, I'm sure you came out a million times in 2015 when we did that stadium tour with Chesney and Aldi. Yeah, yeah. And I tell people, like, we in 11 shows, we played to almost a million people. Isn't yeah. that insane? Yeah. But he was such a nice guy. And every night on the encore, I would back up Aldean. And, and and Kenny and he would come and he would pour as I'm playing the drums rum down my throat sticky yeah. rum and it would get all over Sean Paddock's drums Sean did not like me yeah. I was like, wasn't sure. your fault. I'm so sorry your boss is pouring sticky pirate rum all over me yeah you know <laughs> I've yeah. actually had Kenny's uh, uh, the blue chair rum Yes, that's good stuff. Yeah, very good. I think Jim Riley's at the door right now. No one is at the at the uh, at the door to get it. So, <laughs> so it's probably it's probably a, a good time to wrap up. It Tacklebox Films, right? Yep, tackleboxfilms.com. And I know that if there's a music video that's being made, you're probably making it. And then everyone be on the lookout for cool commercials like the Geico Caveman. That yeah, was your work. That, yeah, that was and, a long uh, time stuff ago. for nice. ESPN, stuff for yeah. uh, documentary films. Yep, yeah, we got some documentaries we're working on. So, um, you know, my my stuff is like it's like everything is like top secret yeah. until it comes out, and then I'm like, hey, now we can finally ba talk about this thing. You and know, you guys so. are over in that building over off of Clinton Street that used to be scary. Like I did my first photo shoot in there, like a totally. gorilla photo shoot, and now it's like you know, great location. It is like. It's tourist central now. Exactly. Ever since American Pickers, Mike Wolf is a good friend of mine. He moved in there. Yeah. And then, you know, all of a sudden the tour buses and everything started coming by. And, you know, of course, Nashville has just exploded. Yeah. So. But, yeah. man, that it is, it's all built out now. And, you know, we, it's like tough to find parking. And It really we'll, is. Yeah, it's it's very busy down there. It's got it's a great location. You got yeah. the you know the hipster coffee shops and the music venues yeah, yeah, and just yeah. a super super fun. Nashville is a fun playground. And one of the things that you speak about documentary, you talk, I'm going to text you, Rich. And say I'm coming. Rich has his own documentary. Oh, that you created. It was ten years old, but uh, <clears throat> it was like seven years in the making. Yeah. So 
See. A, a day, a week in the life of a working musician that I just runned and gunned. Yeah. Richard yeah, like, it was hey, kind I'm of gonna over, I'm going to be over at the studio. Okay, let me grab my camera. There you go. You know, and trying to find a way to put a story together. Finishing up, so sorry. That's Jim Riley, the uh, longtime drummer for the Rascal Flats, is banging on my door. Those, guys. Those no, guys. It's, it's locked. Hey. Oh, okay. Yeah, this yeah, is, this I, is the I, web hey, of life. It's so small. So that's one of my, I would say, you know, look, I've got a lot of favorite videos. I think some of my some of my favorite live stuff has been with you guys. Yeah. Certainly. And when the lights come on, it's, I love Beautiful. that video. And, and, you know, and even the 360 thing was fun. But it, I was sitting here. I was just stopped at Waffle House on the way over here. Yeah, <laughs> that's and the busiest Waffle House in the state. I, 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 that was the first Waffle House I, I ever experienced when I first moved here. And so, anyways, I'm like, I'm gonna pull in there and grab something real quick. So I'm sitting there, and uh, on their little jukebox playing, they had uh, "What Hurts the Most," mm, uh, which is song. one of my favorite videos that i've ever made is that the one on the rain oh where they're gosh. raining and stuff it's and no it's the one where the the uh the kid dies in a car crash and <laughs> and they you know there's like this whole storyline and there's all this debate over like was the girl pregnant when you know her boyfriend died and mm. this whole thing so that was a huge video man yeah. that thing was hugely successful i mean it was crossover um, but man, I worked with those guys a ton back in the day, a ton, you know? So yeah, that's, that is one of my favorite videos that I've, that I've ever made. And, you know, and like I said, I mean, with Kenny, there's just numerous with Jason, there's numerous and, and Luke and, you know, I, I feel so blessed. I've, yeah. I've had so many great opportunities to work with so many wonderful people. So, you know, Nashville, I mean, I just, you know, I can't be more happy with my life and what it's been here in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, making but. that move just was just just framed your life for the next 20 years just, and yeah and you're part of the fabric of nashville and and you help change it and we're doing this together and it's just so cool to um be able to share this creative pursuit with you man yeah really man. really great i appreciate you stopping by everybody yeah. check out tackle box films and uh jim what did you learn you know um i learned a lot of these things um as we we talk about as the conversation always plays out um just the, the staying true to yourself, the virtue mm -hmm. of staying true to yourself and how that proves itself to be over and over again, the best route, you know, because I certainly have learned from that in sure. the past three years of my life, uh, you know, getting in self-employment and stuff like that and doing what I do. That's natural to me. That's within my gifts and talents. Yeah, you so, are, uh... you know, your, your value goes up when you hold your ground, when you, you know, I, this is what I believe, you know. Yeah, so that's what this I, is what I believe. This it's is what just I reiterated do. and being open minded and being flex, flexible and being positive. I mean, what I learned was basically it just reinforced the idea that you took a risk on moving your entire life across the country mm -hmm. and you were open minded and you had a skill set and you were humble and you were approachable and you put a network of people together. And as a result of that, you were able to basically yeah. change the fabric of Nashville and write your own ticket to success in the process. So be open-minded people. A lot of people say, Rich, right. what do I do? I got to, I say, you, location is everything. If you want to be in the music business or the creative arts, you probably need to be in New York, LA or Nashville. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So my, yeah. my biggest opportunity came when I moved to Vegas. Yeah. 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 You can't be afraid to take risks. You know, you asked about my brother, you know, yeah. and, you know, and his, him being an artist and, and singing all through up and down California and stuff. But, you know, but that was where it's, it kind of stopped, you know, and, and I think, you know, for me, it was different. I was ready to go. I was, you know, 18 years old. I'm ready to get out of here. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I don't know. I just feel like there's something more, yeah. you know, and, I was willing to just kind of go out into the wide world, you know, this big world, yeah. you know, unknowingly. With and, a smile and on just, your face. Yeah, and, and just say, hey, I'm just going to take, I'm yeah. just going to take it. Whatever it is, I'm going to take it and I'm going to, you know, make make everything that I can of this life. And honestly, I, I can't, I couldn't have dreamt it. 
Uh, Couldn't have dreamt this. No way. Dream big. I, Very humble. I, I'm trying to do the the math. I think you were like you're probably like 29 years old when you moved to Nashville. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. that's like so when people say 30 is old and you're, I'm almost out of my 20s. Sometimes you don't get going until you're 30, 35 oh, years yeah. old. I yeah. mean, me, Kurt, and Tully, the guys in Aldine's band, we lived together for an incredibly inappropriate length of time. I mean, we all bought our first houses when we were 35 years old. Yeah, and we lived together and we championed each other so. There's a lot of power in having a team of like-minded people around you. Yeah, hey, look, you guys are, uh, I'll say it right here and now, I mean, you're one of the greatest bands in Nashville that wow. ever. As Thank far you, as, I mean, honest I to God, I think that you guys, you're, you're unique to what you do. Your energy is, is unlike anybody else. I think it's just... Um, you can see the years that you guys have spent together, yeah. you yeah. know, and you see that. I just went to the dermatologist and they're like, yeah, just do a little bit more sunscreen. You won't have that right there. <laughs> He's, they, they, they forged the sound. No doubt. For, yeah, absolutely. No, was, no, no doubt. No doubt. So, I mean, I can I, hear his playing great. on a song and know it's him. Yeah. So that's when you know you've done something. I right. love it. Man, it's awesome. It is a nice thing to be able to hear yourself in a supermarket or an elevator, you know, and you and that's a recording. It's forever. Yeah. So is yeah. filmmaking. So is a documentary. It's yeah. around forever. Such a wonderful industry they were in. Well, this was awesome yeah. talking about all this great stuff. Man, I appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, man. It was so good to cel celebrate all of, our, me. all of your victories together. Jim, as always, thanks for your time and talent. You make My this pleasure. happen. You are the secret weapon. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks so much for subscribing, sharing, rating, and reviewing. All that stuff takes one minute, and it really, really helps. As always, thanks to the School of Rock for being our sponsor. Keep coming back for the good stuff, and we'll see you next time. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.